Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Arcis, Portfolio Manager on the Ford International Fund and the Ford Global Equity Fund. And today I just wanted to discuss briefly the potential outcomes of the upcoming U.S. elections, both for the, the presidency as well as the House and Senate, and then some potential implications of those outcomes. First, to highlight the most three most likely scenarios from top to bottom. Uh, the first, which is our base case, is that Joe Biden wins the U.S. presidency. If we look at a number of the polls that are outstanding and then an amalgamation of those polls that The Economist has done, including a number of Monte Carlo simulations, we see that Joe Biden is expected to win 55% of the popular vote and more importantly, has a 95% chance of winning the required 270 electoral votes needed uh, to claim the White House. As importantly, our U.S. House and Senate races. So first, the House is currently controlled by Democrats already. Uh, they are likely to maintain that control with 99% certainty according to current polling. Republicans, however, control the Senate currently. Current polls suggest that Democrats have a three quarters chance of switching the House from Republican to Democrat control. So all in our first scenario uh, and our base case is that there's a three quarters chance of Joe Biden not only winning the presidency, but also that Democrats end up controlling both the House and the Senate. This control of both the executive and legislative branches would allow Biden and the Democrats to put forward relatively sweeping changes to regulation, uh, tax and infrastructure spending, for example, as well as likely enact a, a much larger stimulus than the Republicans would be willing to contemplate. Secondly, uh, our second potential outcome is that President Trump wins the election. Now, polls uh, and the betting market are giving Trump a less than 5% chance of winning. We would put it somewhere between 5 and 10%, but still a far distant, uh, a far distant number two in our potential outcomes. Even in the event that President Trump were to maintain the presidency in the White House, it's likely that the Democrats would at a minimum maintain control of the House and potentially take control of the Senate, which would mean that you would have divided government. Trump's hands would therefore be relatively tied and we wouldn't expect any earth shattering legislation to be able to move forward if Republicans controlled the White House and Democrats controlled at least half of the legislative branch. The third potential scenario, which in our minds is least likely, though certainly still possible, is that we have a contested election. Now, on election night, it's certainly possible that there would be a number of states that are too close to call, such that neither candidate would have the 270 electoral votes required to claim that they've won the election. But as the days go on, we think that there's a less than 1% chance uh, that within the week that we won't know who the president is. But certainly if that were, if that outcome were to take place, that would be deliver the most uncertainty to the market and investors and likely end up uh, with the most volatility in the market. Now, certainly there are a number of what ifs here. It's very difficult to predict the outcome. Uh, and then also it's very difficult to predict uh, what each party will do once they get into office. But certainly what we've tried to lay out, lay out here is our base case. Most importantly, and to conclude, is just to remind our investors that we don't make zero one bets in any of our portfolios. So our portfolios are positioned to benefit over the long term, regardless of the outcome of the U.S. presidential election. The most positive point being uh, that we will know the results in all likelihood relatively soon. And we look forward to following up after the election in the coming days. Thank you.